Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In obtaining a gold restoration from a wax pattern, compensation for shrinkage of the gold alloy and wax must be allowed. Under normal conditions, the investment will compensate for these shrinkages by an equal amount of expansion. This expansion is the sum of the thermal expansion, setting expansion, and hydroscopic expansion. In the water added technique, the major compensating mechanism for expansion is hydroscopic expansion. In the thermally expanding technique, the major mechanism for expansion is thermal expansion. Under normal conditions, both techniques yield accurately fitting castings. with good surface finishes. These problem areas are sprueing, investing, and wax elimination. The purpose of this demonstration is to show examples of castings made under various conditions to indicate the effect of these conditions on the dimensional accuracy of the casting and the surface roughness of the final gold casting. For each condition, a wax pattern was made using Kerr regular inlay casting wax. And a direct technique was used in a warmed conical die similar to the one used in the laboratory experiment. This die has a taper of one degree. For this particular die, a protrusion of the casting of one millimeter corresponds to a dimensional change of four tenths of one percent. The clinically acceptable tolerance for a casting is plus or minus one tenth of one percent. Three parts of a casting must be considered during the sprueing phase of either the water added or thermally expanding technique. These parts are the pattern, sprue, and reservoir. Two basic rules apply in sprueing. The reservoir must be larger than the pattern, and the sprue must have the proper length and diameter. Ordinarily, the reservoir on a typical casting is the sprue button. Although, in special circumstances, it may be necessary to add a reservoir between the sprue button and the wax pattern. Here are three castings that demonstrate the relationship among the sprue button, the sprue, and the wax pattern. This is a normal casting whereby the reservoir, which is the sprue button in this case, is placed five millimeters from the wax pattern. In the case where a 19 gauge sprue or paper clip separates the sprue button from the wax pattern by a large distance, an inaccurate casting is obtained. Notice the porosity at the junction of the sprue and the casting. This casting is also too small. This problem can be somewhat alleviated by placing a reservoir between the sprue button and the casting. However, in this case, this casting was also unsuccessful in terms of shrinkage and porosity because the sprue between the reservoir and the casting was too short. The dimensional accuracy of a casting, whether an inlay or crown, is going to be dependent on two factors, 
expansion of the investment, and surface roughness of the final casting. Exact compensation for shrinkage of the wax and gold is to no avail if the surface of the casting is rough. Prior to investing, one must be certain to clean the wax pattern of the separating media used. Two examples of separating media are dicep and microfilm. Often, debubbleizer is used to clean the wax pattern, but beware that no excess debubbleizer remains on the pattern during investing, for this excess debubbleizer can cause the final casting to have a rough surface. Here are five castings that demonstrate the hydroscopic expansion available in the water added technique. The surface finish of all of these castings is excellent. However, the dimensional accuracy of these castings is quite variable. This casting is too large. It was made using the water added technique, but the investment was immersed during the setting of the investment. The second casting is too small. This casting was made using the water added technique, but no water was added during the setting of the investment. Five conditions were considered in terms of expansion available in the water added technique. The normal condition where 1.3 cc's of water is added to the investment during setting gave an acceptable shrinkage of 8 one hundredths of 1%. 1 Recall that the clinically acceptable tolerance is plus or minus one tenth of 1%. When the investment is immersed during setting, an excessive amount of water is available during setting for hydroscopic expansion. The casting made under this condition gave an unacceptable expansion of 4 tenths of 1%. Casting made uh, under conditions of 9 tenths of cc of water added and 5 tenths of a cc of water added likewise gave shrinkages. The final casting made with no water added gave an unacceptable shrinkage. The reason for these shrinkages is that the water added technique requires hydroscopic expansion to obtain proper compensation for shrinkage of the wax and gold alloy. In the latter three examples, the hydroscopic expansion was insufficient to compensate for the shrinkage of the gold and wax. Once the pattern has been sprued, cleaned, and invested, it is necessary to eliminate the wax for casting. Elimination of the wax must occur at the proper temperature and over the correct time interval. Normal conditions for the water added technique are an oven temperature of 875 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 minutes with the sprue down followed by 30 minutes with the sprue up. If the burnout cycle is not followed, surface roughness on the casting may result and the fit of the casting may not be acceptable. Here are two castings that demonstrate the effect of too short a burnout time and too high a burnout temperature on the fit of a gold casting. Neither of these castings fit. However, this fit is not the result of improper expansion of the investment. This first casting was made under conditions of a 30 minute burnout at 875 degrees Fahrenheit. This casting does not fit.
And in addition, the surface of this casting is black. This black residue is carbon that was not eliminated from the mold cavity. The surface roughness that results from this black residue on the casting causes the fit of the casting to be unacceptable. A second casting resulted from a burnout temperature of 1050, a temperature 175 degrees higher than normal. This casting does not fit, but not because of excessive thermal expansion. Hydrotrol, a water added investment, becomes quite weak at temperatures above 900 degrees F. Thus, when the molten gold enters the mold cavity, the weakened investment is unable to withstand the impact. Usually, small projections of gold result on a casting made under such conditions and the rough surface causes a poor fit. Overheating a thermally expanding investment can likewise cause a poor surface. In summary, the reservoir must be larger than the pattern. The sprue must have the proper length and diameter. The pattern must be cleaned and dried before investing. Elimination of the wax must occur at the proper temperature and over the correct time interval. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.